have a wee discussion about Ukraine as well, which um, I think is something I have to really talk about because it's such a big news item at the moment, such a horrible situation happening there. And I want to start doing something in every live stream that I want you guys to help join in with at times. Um, what I'm going to do going forward is I am going to do, until the Ukraine situation resolves itself to what I feel is a satisfactory conclusion, and that could be something completely different to what everybody else thinks, I want to have on live every live stream a one minute silence to remember all the victims and all the issues and all the problems and troubles of Ukraine on every live stream. So if you're willing to do that with me, what I'm going to do is in about a minute's time, I'm going to do a minute's silence. Um, if you can join in with me when you're watching this back or while you're doing this live, please do so. That's absolutely great. I'm going to do a little um, donation to the Disasters Emergency Committee, the UK version of, of you know, chari uh, organisation that is you do uh, put together all the charitable donations from different companies to to put into one pot. Uh, Scotland's raised six million pounds already, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to make a contribution tomorrow because tomorrow's payday, so a big chunk of my petty cash is going to go into that this month. But um, if you are watching this, um, you can, if you wish to, you can skip. I, I, I hope you don't, but I'm going to take now a minute's silence to remember the conflict in Ukraine, the people who have been affected by it, and I have a wee discussion about an article that's really boiled my blood after this as well. But first of all, let's do the minute silence. Here we go. Thank you if you have joined in with that minute silence there. That is much appreciated. Contagious to do it every month um, that the conflict continues um, until I feel it's satisfactory in regards to the situation. So thank you for joining in if you have either on replay or live with me right now. That really was lovely to see and thank you very much. Um, now, there is one article I want to go into, which has made my blood boil, and this is an article from the BBC website, so I've got it here. Oh, that doesn't work at all, does it? Ooh, I need to change that, because that doesn't quite work. Okay. So, I'll, I'll, I'll put that there for now for the chat. Okay, I'm going to bring up an article here from the BBC News website that I read earlier on, which has made my blood absolutely boil. So, um... As you know, across Europe, there have been people um, evacuating, fleeing, becoming refugees from the Ukraine conflict, fleeing for their lives. And one and a half million people have fled uh, Ukraine since Russia started the war back on the 24th of February. Um, there's an article here from the BBC which made my blood boil because I'm going, how can you be so callous in the government? It really has annoyed me. So the article is by, it's on BBC News. There is a lot of articles across the net, but this one I thought was most poignant. So Ukraine war, UK grants 50 Ukrainian refugee visas so far. So basically, 50 Ukrainians have been granted visas under a scheme for refugees with family links to the UK, the Home Office has announced. It's about 1% of the 5,535 people who have applied since the programme launched 40 hours earlier. Home Secretary Pretty Useless Patel said she was doing everything possible to speed up efforts to issue the travel permits. The Ukrainian ambassador, ambassador praised the UK effort, but urged for maximum number of people to be admitted. Um, the UK steadily increased its visa offer to refugees from the Ukraine war, extending it to parents, grandparents, siblings, as well as immediate family, and extending visas to three years. No, that should have been straight off. I don't care about your present system with the immigration. That shouldn't have happened. That You shouldn't have 
been slowly extending it. You should have been doing it straight away. This whole situation with the point system should be completely removed on this basis because it's a, a humanitarian issue. It's a lack of humanity, as it says down here. But it's faced criticism that its scheme is less generous than the European Union. So while France accused the UK of a lack of humanity, which I can't agree with, saying that 150 refugees were turned back at Cali for lacking a visa. Earlier this week, Prime Minister, and I'm not going to say his name because I'm so annoyed with the government at the moment, um, said 200,000 Ukrainians would be eligible to travel to the UK. Not enough! Not enough! That should be open-ended. There should be no limit. Um, would be eligible to travel to the UK as he extended the offer of visas to a wide range of family members. As of 10 p. 10 a.m. GMT on Sunday, the Home Office had, had said 11,750 had begun applications online, while 5,535 had completed them. That's virtually double, well, yeah, it's not quite double. He added that 2,368 had booked a visa appointment to submit the application and biometric information where around 50 visas have been granted. Asked if it was acceptable that about 1% of applications have been granted in the first 40 hours of the scheme, Miss Pretty Useless said it was the first scheme in the world that's up and running in this short period of time. The scheme shouldn't have been up and running in the first place. You should have just let it go, all these freaking visa things, and just... Put the people in and do the people work, paperwork later. Don't turn at the border. Ukraine's immediate name, uh, it's just annoying. This is an incredible scheme where we're doing everything possible, surging capacity across every single application centre across the EU, she said, adding that staff have been flown to Ukraine's broader countries uh, to speed up applications. Ukraine's immediate neighbours have taken the majority of 1.5 million people estimated to have fled the war, with more than half of them arriving in Poland. Well, that's understandable. It's the biggest country next door to Ukraine. Um... France's Interior Minister, Gerald Dar Darmanin, wrote to Miss, Miss Useless on Saturday, saying that 400 Ukrainian refugees had arrived at Cali to cross the channel, but 150 were sent back and told to obtain UK visas to the embassies at embassies in Paris or Brussels. Mr Darmanin said the response to people in distress was completely unsuitable and showed a lack of humanity, here, here, calling for the UK to put consular staff at Cali to help Ukrainian refugees cross. But Miss Useless said it was wrong to say we were turning back p people back and said the homos are already wor working in Cali to support Ukrainian families. Vadim Pristakio, uh, Pristako, Ukraine's ambassador to the UK, said the visa process could be simplified, adding any issues could be resolved later, but right now the maximum number needs to be admitted. Um, he said any bureaucratic nonsense should be cleared away, although he said it was necessary to continue security checks, but he said the UK was at the forefront of the effort to support the Ukraine. <sighs> I'm sorry, that just boils my blood. I don't... All these other countries have just said, right, okay, yeah, well, I know the people are coming in, we'll just let them in for now, we'll sort the visas out at a later date, and they've been, been doing it. Britain has said, no, if you can't get in, you don't get in. It's like, sh no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that in this circumstance, surely. It's so frustrating, it's so annoying, and I, I really want to... Just turn around and kick somebody's arse in Westminster at the moment. It really is annoyed the hell out of me, this whole situation. These people are desperate. They've been attacked left, right and centre. Mariupol, two times in the past two days, we've had to try and get people to come out in a kind of ceasefire corridor to escape the city and the Russians have bombarded it. They have no choice but to leave. And yes, if they want to come to the UK, let them. Don't faff about like you are at the moment. This is absolutely ridiculous. And this ramping up of the scheme that they're, they're talking about can't take four weeks. It's got to be now and figure out the paperwork later. There's no excuse for it. There's absolutely no excuse. And it really has annoyed me, this whole situation with that in the Ukraine. Um, and I'm sorry, it's not often I rant on here, but that, that has really just boiled my blood, the whole situation. I think it's shocking. I think it's absolutely shocking and um, I hope maybe some of you think that's the case as well because I I think it's absolutely terrible. I really do. I think it's absolutely terrible. If you like this video, don't forget to like it and share it with the hashtag Team Structure and don't forget that subscribe button so you know when a new video comes out. General rule, every video comes out at 4pm GMT on a Sunday. You can also join the Patreon from at least £1 a month, $1 a month you can help join and support the Patreon by joining the link. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Dean Um Yes, um, I will see you Sunday. But thanks guys for watching as always. I'll see you later.